I'm not going to lie, rookie drafts in 2023 is going to be a little bit tricky, especially when we get to the mid to late portions of the first round, early to mid portions of the second round of rookie drafts. Today we're going to go over some older rookie drafts from 2022 back to 2017, and we're going to look through picks from the 109 to the 112 range and see what happened historically through ADP to see if there's any trends that we can fall back on Give a good look, talk some ball on some players. If you want to look from the earlier picks, from the 101 to the 108, I got two other videos up. I'll have them posted below. You can check those out. And you better hit that subscribe button right now because the combine's going on. Wide receivers and running backs are going to be hitting things up soon on Saturday and Sunday. And I'm going to have a lot of content coming at you. And you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss the speed scores. You don't want to miss how the values are changing. And I'm going to be here for you. So smash that right now. We're going to get into it. We're going to start looking at these drafts here. We're going to start with the 109 pick. Right now in February ADP, CJ Stroud's 109 and 1 QB, which is very interesting. I think this is a little bit high considering the depth of this class, considering the value at 1 QB. I feel like this is really high considering the values here, especially when you're so deep at running back and then you're having values fall at wide receiver. I feel like that's not a, the greatest move, the best move on value. Here, though, in 2022, it was Christian Watson. Everything's still out, but he's looking good. He looked good last year. Had some injuries, missed some games. But all in all, had a good start. We'll see going forward, but he does have a good start. Holding value well on ADP. Next is Trevor Lawrence. Big difference from 2021 to 2023. One, Trevor Lawrence, much better quarterback prospect, much more heralded, much more higher in value coming out from when he was in high school all the way up till now. That's why he's kind of up there. Also to the depth from the late first, early second, mid second, early third round is totally different compared to this year. Very less pivots to the quarterback position in 2021 compared to 2022. And then in 2020, the gem of the 109-110 late first round range in our recent memory, Justin Jefferson. I say this is probably due to the running back class being deep. A lot of good wide receivers also. This was a very good class in general. Guys are going to buoy up and down. Very good diversification piece when you look at the grand scheme of things that hit because there are so many good prospects in this class. There's a lot of good prospects. You're going to have players like that fall in a good class like that. At 109, he really should have been valued more, but you're also looking at a bunch of other wide receivers that were good. We got a good running back class. We had that Clyde edwards helaire blip from a lot of managers. Justin Jefferson at 109. This is the value of like the century here for rookie drafts, but we'll have more coming up. That's just what happens. This is part of the game. J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. So J we go from J.J. Arcega-Whiteside at the 109 to Justin Jefferson in ADP. This is May ADP right after the draft where we got the ranges. This is when people are drafting their rookie drafts anyway. So this is when you kind of want to look at the values, not when people aren't really taking it as serious or just staking their claim on names. Here you got some value to it. J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. He hit on some metrics. Hit on some production metrics as well. And the thing about him, though, on tape, he wasn't a separator, a big body guy, contested catch guy. Got high draft capital. Also, at 2019, there was just this tear break at the back half of the first round. Created a trick bag for a lot of folks. In 2018, we had a good running back class. Probably the worst of the bunch, though, was on Johnson. Big physical back. Finished his career strong at Auburn. The thing was, he was slow. He didn't have that burst. He didn't have that pop. He just didn't carry over to the NFL level. I was not high on him coming out. I was higher on J.J. Arcega-Whiteside than I was on on Johnson, but I wasn't really high on J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. It just happened to be there in some moments. And then John Ross in 2017. First round pick. Blaze the 40. Lots of hype because of that. We got to the part of that first round where people were just selecting players, but there were other players in 2017 I was pivoting to other than John Ross. We'll probably get to them in this video, so you want to hold on tight. John Ross was not one of my guys. John Ross became a buy later when he was free, but free players are free players. John Ross just never hit. And you just looked on tape. He wasn't very nuanced. He was only winning with speed. That wasn't enough. Also, the injuries. The injuries killed it for him. Maybe it could have been different if he was healthy during the early portions of his career and he was able to build upon that. But we'll never know. We'll never know. All in all, Justin Jefferson is the class. Trevor Lawrence, 
is one of the rare quarterbacks that you take in the first round at this point. It's a 1-9, 108, 105. One of the rare ones. You should have like one every five to ten years, really, in one QB leagues. At the 112 range, 111, 201, 202, if they're good quarterbacks and it's a, not as deep of a class, then you can pr- kind of make the case you, you probably could. But then, on the other hand, if they're studs, they should be valued higher. And really, the quarterbacks and one QB, you can always just get them later. So you want to really wait on them a bit and take those shots at wide receivers and running backs because quarterbacks the position you can get cheap and fill it in later going at the 110 we got our boy flowers here at the 110 spot zay flowers looking to do some big things at the combine has been a riser this draft season and last year at 110 was Jahan dotson first round pick high end first round flashed in 2022 decent profile it's kind of a value right now jury's still out but things are looking good terrace marshall not living up to the prowess Maybe things can change, but things got to change quick and in a hurry. He's still young. He's still only 22, going to turn like 23 in June. So there is still some time. Change in offense. Carolina has not looked great. They've been a revolving door at the quarterback position, but things got to change soon. It's not looking good right now. Keyshawn Vaughn, interesting prospect. There was a lot of people that loved him. He had back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons to finish his, his career in college decent metrics on the workout tape was kind of good but not really good he was good as in he was decisive he had some power he would just be very quick with his decision making didn't really make many bad decisions but he wasn't really great at chaining together moves in the second level he wasn't super dynamic he was just there he was just not being bad he wasn't really dynamic of a player at the college level he got some production His receiving yardage, he had, what, one year of over 20 catches. The rest of them were just, just, eh, 16 catches the second year, third year, whatever, first year at Wake or whatever, Vandy or whatever. Just wasn't great. Debo Samuel at the 110, 2019. Another wide receiver I was going with in this draft. This is the draft. I faded the top running backs and just pumped those receivers up. It was A.J. Brown, D.K., and then Debo. I did not talk about Debo in the other videos because honestly, he kind of blipped my mind. But he was in the back end first range for me. He popped. I started leaning towards aggressive wide receivers at the catch point and after the catch during this realm. That just started becoming one of my things. He was aggressive, and that started to bake into my prospect analysis. Aggressive wide receivers who are super aggro, and that has been working for me. All this time since then and before that. That's what I was baking into. Calvin really fell to 110. A lot of different things in his analysis from a lot of content creators back then. Um, pegged as just a wide receiver two. Uh, wide receiver two maybe plus. Good route runner though. Very nuanced. 2018 deep at the running back position. So you're going to catch wide receivers falling a little bit in drafts. Think about this. 2022. Very good. Think of it in this standpoint. 2023, we're very solid at the running back position. We're very deep. We're going to catch value as that wide receiver. That's why I say macro lens. Look at the running backs. Lean at the running backs. Micro, take the value at wide receiver. Here was a good value at wide receiver. You got a guy with draft capital. You got a guy that's nuanced, who's been productive at at a high-end Power 5 school. Then Juju Smith-Schuster in 2017. People were sleeping on him in drafts. NFL Network was sleeping on him. Big Media was sleeping on him. Some guys were talking him up. I was high on him. Big slot wide receiver coming out of USC. Productive early in his career. And you got him in a value. And some people would look at his entire body of work at the NFL as a bust. But that value hit range after his second year at Pittsburgh, you can't beat that. And that was high. Everybody was after him. He was a super high startup pick. And... Since that, you can't really call him a bust. You had to manage that perfectly. You did. You busted on him because he gave you the return on the investment there. At 111, Zach Evans. My feelings on Zach Evans is going up and down by the minute here. And I'm going to keep it real. I'll have a video out on that probably within a few days. I guarantee it because I'm thinking about it a lot. But let's look at the history here. George Pickens last year. We were big on George Pickens on this channel this time last year. 
big. He was the discount wide receiver. He was the guy with the pedigree that was getting faded. He was forgotten about due to the injury. Limited play that last year. And look where we're at now. We got a return on the investment. Elijah Moore, 2021. He's a good wide receiver. He's a good slot guy. Slot plus is what I would call it because he does have some athleticism. He's kind of nuanced. Very good at Ole Miss coming out. Very crazy with the New York Jets here, especially last season. And he had a good prospect profile. I think this was a great value for him. He got faded because he was a Jet. Those instances, you just got to take the value and just hope the talent shines through, which is a good possibility that could, that could still happen because he has flashed off and on throughout his career. Just crazy stuff with the Jets, Zach Wilson and company, and that's just what happens sometimes. Henry Ruggs. We all know about that story. It's not good. I don't want to get into it. Wasted talents. Could have been some upside there, but we'll never know. Noah Fanton, 2019 there. High athletic tight end, first round draft, capital. A guy that had the makings to really usurp being a tight end in the production early in his career. Just never materialized. Another reason why you should really think hard of not drafting tight ends early in rookie drafts and just catch the dip later. Cortland Sutton in 2018. I think he gave you a return on investment when you look at the end of first round rookie drafts. Considering how deep this running back class was back then and how deep the talent pool was, I think it was a good investment here at 111. He had gave you that one good year. He got a couple other decent years, so you can't knock that. David Njoku, highly athletic first round tight end. Again, a lot of people were buying the Browns in this situation. That year they had three first round picks. Njoku. Highly athletic, early draft capital. People were on to that. Another instance where you could just bottom cheaper later. And you could get him now and get production. Now, it's not like he was a bust of a player. It's just the value of the position. It just takes some time. It's very nuanced. It's very situational. There's Everything's got to line. The stars got to line correctly for that to happen. And you got to be good. You just can't be bad and just walk into being good at a tight end. You also got to be good. And you got to have some good stuff coming at you as well. 112, Devin Chain. I think at this part of the draft, things are going to flip a lot with players. Devin Chain's popular with a lot of folks. 112 last year, James Cook in 2022, going to the Bills. Second round draft capital, got pumped up after the draft. That's interesting there. Jury's still out on him. Caught some balls last year, had some receiving production, which is always good to note. Michael Carter in 2021 had like third round draft capital. He got pumped up. A lot of people liked him. He was overdrafted in a lot of drafts. I had some videos specifically saying do not draft him in the first round. This is evidence that people were doing that. And that's something you shouldn't have done. Later round running backs don't have the sunk cost invested in them. So it's easier for their team to go against the grain and get another running back. That's just an easy thing to do. They did it with Brees Hall. They might bring in another guy. on a night looked good. Very icky situation. Joe Burrow. Good value here. Again, the 112 range is a good spot to go with a quarterback. Quarterbacks are going high right now in ADP. I think that's just because ADP is early and things haven't materialized. We don't have as many people in the know drafting. But I think those quarterbacks are going to come down in one QB ADP because they have to. That's just what the market says over time. And especially with how deep this class is, Joe Burrow at 112 makes sense considering where quarterbacks go, good quarterback, a guy you want, you could have really drafted him, then T. Higgins, the next pick, and been stacked. I'd made that stack a few times in rookie drafts because I thought that was great. Tyler Murray, same thing, same thing. Not the greatest quarterback to come out. Had some upside with the rushing ability, and at the 112, you're not taking any risk. If you draft him at 105, 106, 107, yeah, there's risk there because there's opportunity costs at running back and wide receiver. You're saying Tyler Murray... Or Justin Jefferson in one QB. Just that opportunity cost. Especially when you can get a quarterback to fill that boy for cheap. Even off waivers in one QB. Christian Kirk in 2018 was a good value play this end of the draft. Because he had good production numbers out of college. Transitioned into a slot guy plus. Looked like a slot guy plus at Texas A&M. Ran the ball a little bit at Texas A&M. Had good markers. Good breakout age. Really solid choice this late in drafts. And then Alvin Kamara fell. Alvin Kamara fell. There's questions about his tape during this time. There's questions about that. 
Also, pre-draft, uh, whether he finished his runs and stuff. One thing you couldn't knock him for is his ADOT, yards after the catch. His burst score was really high. And then it was like, can he get to a team that will check it down to him? Because we know he's really good in the passing game. Then that happened, and he jumped in drafts. He jumped in ADP. 112 in ADP was kind of light. He was trickling up week by week back then. Like he moved up to 112, 110, and just kind of went up because it was soured on him throughout the process. Some people liked him, but the process, a lot of people didn't like him. He was very iffy with a lot of folks. His pass catching prowess, his burst, his athletic upside, his ability to catch the ball in the backfield gave him upside. He should have been pegged much higher, though. I think nowadays, if we redid 2017, he would have been a lot higher. Not counting in his career, just athleticism, just his ability to catch balls out of the backfield, his PPR prowess and all that stuff. That holds a lot of value. But that's it. That's a good look of what we're looking at here. There's still some good players in the back half of the first round. And I believe we're going to catch some in 2023. I think we're going to catch a few running backs. I think we're going to catch a couple wide receivers who get slept on. The top three, one of them might fall down to us around the 111 range-ish, somewhere around there. We could see one of them fall. We might be able to catch them at a discount. We might have a wide receiver sneak up in the first round of the real draft. We might be able to catch them at 111, 110. These running backs are going to trickle up the board. We saw that with some of these picks. Late round running backs who people liked, they might throw them up. This is a good running back class, so I expect some depth in the late first round. I expect it to trickle down to the second round as well. Let me know your comments below. Let me know what picks you made during these years, if you made any of these, if you had any of these slots. I want to hear about it. Hit that subscribe button. I'm going to have a lot of content coming out surrounding the combine here in the next couple days when these players run. I'm going to be hitting you guys heavy with content. Also, I'm going to help you build your dynasty teams and get you ready for the end season setting those lineups. I want to thank you for watching, though. Catch you on the next video.